Hey girls, it's Jenny with Fun and Perfect, and in today's video, it's another plan with me. Hey girls, I'm glad you're back. I'm Jenny with Planner Perfect, founder of Planner Perfect, and I coach women how to write a better story for their lives. And in this video, I'm gonna be going through how I plan my life. And this is always a really highly requested video, and I'm glad to bring it to you. This is, what you're gonna see here is just where I do plan my week, and some things that you need to really take note when planning your life, and that is you need time, okay? It's gonna take some time. You need a vision, and, um, you need to know what needs to be done and you also need to know what you want to do. So, you know, it's like your whole main purpose is not to just achieve these these tasks, but rather where is the direction that you want your life to go and how what are the steps that can take you there and what are some creative ways that you can accomplish these things. Always going to God first so that he can give you the wisdom and be led by him on what you're going to do. And so instead of creating plans and asking God to bless them, we're going to make sure that we are really hearing God's voice and doing his plan because any other plan is going to be subpar at best. And we want to make sure that we're staying within the realm of his plans that he has for us. So if you're planted in the home right now, and if you've got kids, then a lot of that is going to be priority of doing everything well and doing it, um, with beauty and, and intention. And so those are going to be where you're going to really want to make sure that you are being a visionary for your home, that you're taking care of how the home is run and you're, you're the, you're the CEO. So you are going to really make sure that things are done properly and with order and with beauty and intention. When it comes to yourself, you never want to neglect yourself. Me being a mom of eight has been able to start up a business by simply taking heed of what I knew my talents were and my gifts and just followed the leading of God to start up a blog and to just share what I knew. It was simple because I was sharing things that I loved and what I was naturally good at. And when everybody can do that, we all just get inspired because you're just sharing things that is, it comes easy to you. It's something that, because I don't share things on here that does not come easy. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you don't see me starting up a gardening channel. <clears throat> and so it's it's those kind of things that I share what I'm good at. And it's my niche of things that I'm good at that I can share with you that you could use to to and for yourself to help cultivate that same kind of um beauty in your home and in your life by just what I've come to learn. And even through some of my hardships, I've, I've been able to, to pull from it and God's been able to, to, to teach me some things that I need have needed to learn. And by sharing that, I hope and pray that that is inspiring to you so you can take it and, and not have to go through the same processes as I had. Um, so when I go to plan my life, it's it's really just, you know, creating plans and it's first going to God first. Like, God, how do you want me to, um, I, I'm here for you today. Choose this day whom you will serve. It's it's my new line in scripture that I recite in the morning when I, right when I open up my eyes, you know, it's choose this day whom you will serve. Because honestly, it's going, there is no gray. And um, it's like, God, I choose you. And, and there are so many ways that we can slip up and be in the world. And it's one of those things that as of late, I've really been paying attention to on things that I need to make changes with and what I'm doing. And so I create these plans. I don't create plans and ask God to, to bless them. I actually go to him first and feel the leading of him on what my day and how it will and should go. And so Sundays are my greatest days of when I go in there and I start to plan out my whole week. And then each night before the next day, I will kind of pray over my life and, and ask God to reveal to me how he wants, you know, my day to go and where, what, how he could use me and best and what I can do. So when we start to step out of that and, and being, hearing God's voice and, and doing that, then we tend to grind, hustle, get burnout and get sick. <clears throat> and so 
we need to do things in the right order, and that is to make sure that it's God, that we're that we're siding with God, and that we are um, abiding in Him before we make our plans. And so, I really encourage you to do that because your life will be, you know, blessings will follow you. You don't have to go and chase them; they will just be part of a being obedient to Christ. So. When you go to set up your plans, I really just kind of, I, I, I make sure I've got the time. I This is a great day. Sundays are like, I'm cleaning out the fridge. I'm finding out what I have. I want to be a good steward of our money. And I want to make sure that what we have and what we have in the freezer, that I am being a good steward and where I'm using it. I don't need to go buy extra or excess and then things go bad. It's just one of those things of just really taking a good inventory of what I have and what I don't have. Um, I, I plan out my... Um, so I'm getting all that done and I write it in my spiral notebook. I'm writing down like, oh, okay, I need to put in here. It's a brain dump of what I have, what I need, what I got in my freezer and how can I create meals out of those. And then if I've exhausted all of it and I still need some more, then I will be writing all those things down. And I usually go to the grocery store on Monday. So we kind of make that a, it's been a homeschooling thing for our family for forever because the kids can learn a lot by going to the store, looking at what things are and what they cost and, and the whole process of getting food. Um, and then of course, putting them in the car and getting them out and and just a whole routine of taking care of the family through um, getting food. What food is nutritious, which food is not, where, you know, can we have fun and just splurge on something on one time or whatever. It's just it, going through all those kind of thought process together is a very enriching and learning and ex experience. Um, and so I always share all of that with my kids, like, well, this isn't good for us, but let's go ahead and do this this time, or let's not, or what do you guys think? Or if you had to pick one trait, what would it be? Or it's just going through life together. And that's how we live and learn over here. I also have where I plan out my homeschooling week. So we, I have my B6 is what I'm working in. And so that's going to go into my plans and of, of where we're going to do our schoolwork or um, what time and those things have to be accounted for as well as the food that they're going to eat because every time I feel like I don't create a vision for what they're going to eat or what are my plans or how I'm going to do YouTube videos or how I'm going to take care of the things I need to do for business I am constantly feeling that pressure and it's actually the worst. I, I don't, I, it's actually like the worst uh, because you don't feel in control. And I think that not having a vision for your life it creates chaos and it's just no way to live. So I always make sure that I tend to the home. I tend to the people in my home. I tend to myself. There's just many things that need attention and intention. So, um, I create that. So for the week, I'll plan out like what we want to do with different schoolwork. And I found that using the monthly plan books for my school lessons are above and beyond what I feel is really good for my family, period, um, for homeschooling. We are not exactly like the school system. I don't ever want to replicate the school system. There was a reason why my family just for us took them out. And so I might as well do things a little bit different. So we do, and we're very child led where their interests are is where I'll focus on. Or if they're just adamant about not learning something at a certain time, I let it go. And I touch base and wrap around and come around later when they're more receptive to it. And I've had early readers and late readers, and I won't go on and on about that because it's a homeschooling subject, but it's, it's kind of like just life lessons in general. I think when we're most receptive to something um, you know, is when we're going to learn. If you try to beat someone over the head with something and they're not ready, you know what it's like. You talk to a friend about something that's new and you can just tell they're blocked off, walled off. They don't want to hear it. They're like, oh, okay, I'm glad it works for you. You know, but if you really want to be an inspiration, you got to kind of know when someone's receptive and then get in. And so that's what I have always done with my children is identifying also their gifts and strengths and also being able to identify when they're ready for something. And by doing that, I'm listening to them and finding out, yeah, hey, what do, do you want to learn how to tell time today? No? Mm. Um, but a lot of times you will find when you have that setting where their autonomy is um, sacred, that they do, they, they've always come to me and said, hey, I'm ready to learn this. I want to learn this. I want to learn this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. And so I've always aided them and helped them that way. So they basically all the time are coming to me. And so that's one of my roles is that I just make sure that I'm available and especially creating a time block where that time is just 
I'm here, you know, just what, let's do this. So, um, anyways, I just really have all of this room in these planners, uh, monthly planners to set goals for our month for schooling. And it's basically two boys that I'm doing that is pretty structured in a way, um, every day. So, um, I can set goals for them. I have these pages for my week that I can get real detailed with and talk about what I want to learn and do. And, that's exciting. So the monthly plan books, and so I'm set for, I have four books up. So I have September through December. So I've got the rest of my year in my B6 and I'm thrilled. I have everything that I need to plan and I can take that with me. We love to go to different hot spots, like our favorites, like Panera and get a bagel or do something. And then we bring, the kids bring their backpacks and we do our schooling. And so I can bring that with me and I know what we're doing and what their agendas are, as well as we've discussed what we wanted to learn that week and I always bring them into it. And so it's a lot of fun. And so that's my other method of planning for that is that I've got this awesome school system thing that I have found. I have tried, honestly, all sorts of school planners. And honestly, I hate them all. I've, I, I hate to be so, yeah, I just, because I wouldn't have been, I, I mean, I would have used one. I don't, actually have a typical school planner and I even went through the process of thinking I would make one but when I go to make one I already don't like it what I'm making because it's so structured and boxed in that it just doesn't fit the profile I feel of allowing children and and there is their teacher freedom I feel like when it's so boxy and so that when a box isn't filled or if you're not in it, then you immediately either feel like a failure or you, you, you feel too stressed by the, the tightness of what needs to be fulfilled. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, I like the, the, the looseness, the, the creativity of thinking of all of the things that we can do and learn and see because learning isn't doesn't just come from a book. So especially, obviously, these are going to be for homeschooling moms or I guess a teacher can benefit from the other ones. But for someone who's taking control of their school kids of schooling at home, I find this to be awesome because you can be very, very creative in how to get children to learn. I mean, I've taught a lot of my daughters how to and sons, how to uh, you do fractions through baking. I mean, there's different ways to pique their interest and things like that. So there's just so many different ways to be creative. Like, hey, I'm gonna make my, I'm gonna have my daughter make bread today. I'm gonna have this daughter make, you know, cookies today, and we can go over fractions. So that's kind of how we we were living and we were learning, and that's what we're doing. So that's a big part of how I have been, you know planning my week and it starts on a Sunday. And then when it comes to my home and how to clean and keep it, I have my morning routines and I've got my evening routines and those are solid and I absolutely love them. And then um, Sundays are when I really do my Sunday checklist and it's an easygoing day, but it's just bedding, it's baking, it's, you know, stripping beds and baking and it's pulling bread out of the oven and making home cooked meals and prepping and cleaning out the fridge. And it's, it's a very beautiful day actually. And I love to be cozy. And now that fall's hitting, you know, it's like turning on the fireplace. It's just one of those just really beautiful days. So I absolutely love that. And, um, then for each, each part of my week, the way that I plan is when you really, I love to plan out like my absolutes, what I know I'm going to be doing on a Sunday, every day of the week. And then I leave gaps because then the night before we might get this idea like, Hey, Oh, okay. Let's do this tomorrow. And let's try to fit this in. or I'm going to rearrange this. Those gaps allow for that flexibility, but I love to be able to put down like my absolutes. I also, that's where I put down like, you know, this is my menu plan for the week. Um, I can pull from the spiral. I've got it. All I needed my grocery list in my grocery um, menu book that I can take to the store. So I have that all filled out and ready. And then I will put in from my dump brain dump, all of the ideas for breakfast, lunches, and dinners is what, how I do it. And then I will just sprinkle them into all of my days. And that way I'm completely organized. And that really has to do with, um, myself, but I'm pretty, I, I'm pretty, I kind of, I eat kind of the same things all the time. So I feel like I'm kind of taken care of. I don't need to really worry about that too much, but I do like to make sure that I have the kind of foods that I love. And for instance, hummus, I literally 
could survive on hummus. I tell my husband all the time and then he gets really bored and he walks away from him. So I'm like talking to his back, but I'm like, I literally could eat hummus every day. I'm not kidding. I don't care how I get it into my mouth, whether it's a carrot or a pita chip, I want hummus breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm like crazy for it. Um, it's just my new obsession. I've always loved it, but now it's like completely hiked up. I'm just like a freak about it. And then I got this Jerusalem cookbook. I just felt like, I don't know. I just feel like you guys are my people because I love all of it. Okay. I mean, I got, I mean, it was just this anyway, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's stuff food that my kids won't eat. So I promised my husband, I was like, okay, like totally on a Saturday, we'll like throw something on the grill that the kids will eat like brats. And then you and I, okay, we're having a feast, a Mediterranean feast, because that's what I eat and you are too, okay? I don't care if you're from Ireland, we're doing this because I'm the one making it, you know? And I don't know, something is so, something about baking bread fills your soul and you just I mean like you just I just can't baking bread is like quintessential to it's like it sings it's like that's what home homemaking bliss I mean am I right or am I right or am I right I mean and when you use quality ingredients I mean you only use quality ingredients for crying out loud if you're gonna bake do it right. Okay. So like I, I'm using Sunri Sunrise Mills flour and they have a heritage wheat, which has been untouched, kind of like Kamut, but it's like, it has not been, it is not a dwarf wheat. It has not been altered, touched or changed. It is organic and it is uh, not hybridized. And so nor altered. And I absolutely love it. And I use it. I go through a 25 pound bag, no joke in a week to week and a half because of all the baking I do. I mean, it's like, because I love it. And I love baking pitas. I like making um, English muffins. Have you ever made an English muffin before? Because when you make an English muffin, then your life's changed. Have you made a pita and seen it rise like in a skillet where the pita rises, that pocket literally rises? Game changer for your like your whole mood. It's like a mood booster. I don't know. I hope I can encourage you to get in your kitchen because, and I would love to start doing a playlist. I know sometimes I talk big and then you're like, where's Jenny at? I mean, just I'm coming. Okay. I promise. I feel, I look like, well, where's Jenny at? I thought she said she was going to make homemade pasta with us, you know? And so, yeah, but I promise I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. So I want to make like all of these different foods and fall foods. And I'd love to have a separate playlist. I don't want to create a new YouTube channel for it. I just think it's lame. I just want to do it on my main and just create a playlist. So like if it pops up and you don't, you're not interested, then you're not interested, but I'm here and I'm bringing it to inspire the whole woman and how to plan a life that is full of inspiration and beauty and the creativity and the vision to create this beautiful and amazing life. And so when I get into my planner and it's beautiful and it's simple and it's open and it's airy and I can just dream up all of the possibilities. So I'm planning a life that I literally want to want to do like that excites me. I want to do this. And, um, it's just, and having Christ being Christ centered, that's going to give you what you need to accomplish everything that you need to do. I mean, without a doubt. And so God comes first. He's right there. He's the center of everything. And your journey is just, he's going to bless your hands and he's going to, you want him, you want to be hooked up to your power source. Don't unplug yourself, guys. Do not unplug yourself from God. You need that power to be able to walk in divine health, to be able to, um, he know, He has plans for you, for, for he knows the plans that he has for you. He has a plan specifically for you. So you want to get plugged in. You want to find out what it is. And he will speak to you through spirit to spirit. And You'll just have this, this, this knowing, this inner knowing. And, um, he doesn't, it's, it's not even through your mind. He's speaking through spirit to spirit. That's how he can talk with you. Because when you become saved, he, you have the spirit of Christ in you. So, wow. I mean, so you have his spirit 
in you with all of his capabilities and power. And he wants to be able to work through you. So that's why the utter importance of really making a conscious decision. Choose this day whom you will serve because sometimes we get swept up and we get offended. And so we never are, are dealing with flesh and blood, but with principalities. And so we start to begin to get sucked up into the world. And we need to always remember and make the intention today I'm serving God. And so everything I do will come into the obedience of Christ, including my thoughts, because our thoughts begin and then our actions follow. So it's always just keeping that first. So that's first and foremost. And I just, I love planning meals, kids, husbands. We do. We love meals. We love, I'm like, what if we took a beautiful walk every night now that it's cool with the whole family? Or I love like, well, let's go do this on Saturdays or let's, do you want to make apple jelly with me, boys? Or let's go to the apple orchard here or let's do our schoolwork at, you know, for lunch this time. Or um, it's just creating a beautiful life and that takes some thought, some vision and some creativity. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here to coach you girls into living and actually accomplishing everything that God has for you on this journey here on earth, honestly. And um, he wants to work through you. He wants to use you. And I just, I we really glorify him by being um, intentional, by taking care of the home and creating order by loving, by keeping our, um, our thoughts, holding those captive and obedient to Christ, making sure that we don't fall into traps of bitterness and unforgiveness and start living out that life. We need to really know who we're going to serve. And, um, that's first and foremost. And all of those things really would just come into play so beautifully when you base your foundation on Christ. And so girls, that is how I plan my week this week. I hope that it has inspired you to lick your pens and get ready to plan a life that you absolutely love. Let me know what other videos you'd love for me to do as well. So I can really get like from here on out to get real serious about different playlists so that you can go to specific playlists to like get inspiration from. So be sure to tell me down below what more you'd like to see, whether it be more fall recipes or menu planning in general or whatever. Just let me know down below. I would love to be able to do that for you. And until next time we're together, bye you guys.